our listener here. So I've decided to have a custom leap listener, which is inheriting from the listener, which is a leap motion object. And you can see here some of the methods. So basically we know when it's initialized, when it is disconnected and when it exits and so on. What you want to make sure he, that you note is that on connect is where you want to set which gestures to support. So you have to tell it that, hey, I'm interested in these gestures. Because if you don't register those there, then you're not going to, you're not, if you forget to register which gestures you want to listen to, uh, it's not going to happen. So just make sure you do that. And basically what I'm doing here is I am just for reaching, I'm just iterating through the different gesture types that exist. And because it's, they are enums, it kind of looks like that. Now let's move on to the frame method. This is where you'll get the frame. So this is where you're going to get the frame each time uh, it registers something. Well, it's actually going to take the frame continuously. So this is where you get your frame. There is something called a timestamp on the frame object. And the timestamp is really nice to use when you want to make sure that you don't do something on every single frame. Because as I mentioned, it takes quite a few uh, frames and it's a lot of work for the computer as well and uh, for the application. So what I've done here is I make sure that I don't do something on every single frame. Of course, you can have this logic and if anywhere else you want to, but it's really nice that you have the timestamp on the frame object. Now, if you wonder what, what's happening down here, I'm going to show you. Basically, what I want to do is when I use the custom leap listener, I want to be able to attach an event handler whenever fingers are registered or whenever gestures are made. And the reason why I'm using a task here is I want that to happen asynchronously. So I don't want to have to wait for the first one to finish until the other one is set. So this is our custom leap listener. And if we go back to the main view model, we're adding this listener to the controller. So you have the controller and then you have the listener that is listening for things to happen. So the first thing I'm doing is, of course, registering the events um, well, and the event handlers on the events. So I have the on fingers registered and on gesture made. So let's have a look what's actually happening. On gesture, uh, on fingers registered, uh, we, first of all, on the view, we want to show how many fingers are being registered and we want to move the flower to the position where the fingers are. So first of all, you got to know where is the screen and how big is the screen? Because you're, you're not going to know that. Or are you going to know that? Well, actually, you can know that because the controller has actually screen objects. And it has a calibrated screens object. And here I'm just selecting that, getting the closest screen hit. And I'm sending in the very first finger registered in the finger list. And then you need a coordinate. Now, getting the coordinate is, is a little bit tricky because you might have a really large screen and then you're registering the fingers for above the device and the question is where is this point on the screen how do you get that so let's go and have a look at that calculations helper is just a static helper class i've made so you have to get normalized x and y and this method has two uh, parameters which is a finger list and a screen object so basically what you're doing, you're getting the, the intersection. You're getting the intersection of the ray projected from your finger to the screen. So wherever it kind of hits the screen, that's the intersection. And that's what you want to get a hold of. Now you want to get that number as a normalized value. A normalized value is basically it will trans transform that, I don't know, maybe 600 pixels or something to a value that is between 0 and 1. I'm not sure if this makes sense, but just listen to me. So basically, if you have a coordinate system like this, and you'll have zero in the corner, I hope I think it's going to be the other way around. So you have zero in the corner, and then you have one at the top, and then one at the far right, and that's the normalized values you're going to get out. Uh, maybe it's probably easier if we have a look at it in a different way, and I'm going to see if I can actually find a screenshot because I took a screenshot of that uh, 
Now we're gonna have a look at this. Uh, what you see here is actually a right-handed coordinate system, which is what LEAP is using. And what you see there, I'm just drawing out where the point is, uh, where the finger is actually registered, because you can't see it so well on the screen. And you can see the y-axis and the x-axis and the z-axis, which is kind of coming towards us. And it shows you where about on the screen and the ray is uh, projected from the finger and it meets the screen, which is really cool. And I hope that kind of uh, explains it a little better than I am able to do. And make sure you check out the Leap Visualizer if you have a Leap uh, to make sense out of things before you start programming. So that's all I wanted to show you with this one. And we'll jump straight back into the code and talk more about code. So once we get those... Uh, you basically also want to make sure that you take in account uh, the width of the screen and also the height and based on uh, how the implementation of the system is on that operating system you gotta make sure that you deduct the um, the two numbers from each other you also have another method here which i've called is within range of cloud it's just a method where i make sure uh, where i check if the coordinates are within the range of the cloud. I've just set some hard-coded values just for demonstration purposes. So yeah, that's it. So that's how you get uh, the X and the Y coordinates and that's actually really important. Now there's way more details to that. Um, I wasn't quite sure how much to cover in regards to that, but I want to keep this tutorial fairly short. So that's why I'm not going into detail, but I'll make sure I write a blog post where I explain myself a little bit better and what the intersect method does, because there were a couple of more parameters we probably should discuss. So what I'm doing after I'm getting the X and the Y coordinates is I'm making sure that I am updating the UI thread uh, correctly. So I'm not blocking the UI thread and the application is uh, crashing. So I'm setting the, the different uh, scores and I update the UI properties and so on, which is, I can show you here, it's not, not any magic. I'm just setting the, the canvas uh, coordinates, the left and the top, and also calculating the score and basically just collapsing the cloud uh, if the score is about 50,000 points. I have another method here called set leap as mouse which, mouse as which is really cool and this is something I bet you're very curious about. A lot of people ask me about that. How do you use the leap motion as mouse? Now it will be it will work as mouse out of the box once they start selling it but a lot of people have the device already and they want to be able to do this. I can show you how it's done in C Sharp and this is how I've done it. First of all, you need to get the screen again, the screen object, and you have to make sure that it's valid here, as you can see here. Because sometimes the screen, uh, the screen will actually not be null, but it's still not valid. So you want to make sure that it is actually valid and that you also have a screen. So I have two methods here, which the first one enables the leap as a cursor and the other one enables click with leap. We'll have a look at the click first, which is just enabling you to actually uh, do, I think it's a, uh, I think the two events you see down there in the code is actually a uh, left mouse uh, button down and up. So these are uh, Win32 API calls uh, that you're looking at. And this is how it's written. And if you want to handle other events, uh, you can find them, just Google it. In regards to setting the, the leap as a cursor, uh, basically you want to make sure, well, I probably should have done that in the other method as well. You have something called velocity. So if you remember from school in physics, velocity is uh, how much something is moving. And you want to make sure that if something is moving too much, that that's not going to really work out for us. So we can't really use that. So uh, basically what we're doing here is we're setting the cursor position and if we now go to this one, these are the calls, the Win32 calls we are doing and basically you can see here just setting the cursor position and then also handling a couple of events. So this is simple as that really, um, that's all you need to do, which is really cool.
right? So we've done that and then we had another thing we were doing which was basically listening to gestures made and we're going to navigate to that one. So basically whenever a gesture is made and remember you have to register the gestures you are allowing uh, when, uh, when you are connecting the, the listener and I'm just basically just updating the string on the UI whenever a new one is registered. So if you look at this gesture types lookup, uh, it's actually a class and a method I've created, another static class and static method, basically a static property. Uh, sorry, field, God, I am really brother in my mind. So basically what you see here is just a basic lookup dictionary where I've added as a key the different gesture because they are unique and then just add the description as a string which will then be the value and you can use that to look it up so we don't have to have a big old uh, switch statement which I really don't like. So um, I think I kind of gone through the whole code Maybe I've gone to, through it a little bit too fast, I uh, hope not. I just wanted to show you how it's done really quickly. I honestly haven't practiced this tutorial uh, or demonstration at all. I did a demonstration at .NET conference and uh, I hadn't cleaned up the code. Uh, basically, I didn't want to. I didn't want to use any design patterns. I just wanted to have a really simplistic demonstration code for that event. And I kind of thought that I wanted to add something, um, clean up the code a little bit uh, for those who are familiar with MVVM and so on, so they can see uh, how it can be, how it can be put together uh, architectural. Uh, I'm not saying this is the best way to go, but it's definitely a start. So now you have two different demonstrations. You have the one at .NET conference and you have this one as well. I'll make sure that the code is available and the slides as well. And I hope this helps. And before I say goodbye, I just want to remind you again of something really, really important. And this is the bit here, which is the on closing. So on closing, when you close the application, please remember to one, remove the listener dispose the controller and dispose the listener. Very, very important. Otherwise you're gonna have problems. So yeah, that was it. If you see anything that can be changed uh, or you have any suggestions, let me know and uh, have fun with the leap motion. And please, please, please share if you have any cool code or cool videos or anything. And to leap motion, uh, thank you so much for a really cool device. I know I and quite a few other developers are very, very, very excited about uh, the future and what's going to happen next. Wish you all the best and thank you. And over and out from Iris Claussen. Goodbye.